Today, I'm going to give you perspective on 10 things you ought to unlearn in 2019. You know, a lot of you, before I get into the content today, ask me about how I create content. Is there a content creator that gives me ideas? Today, I'm going to introduce you to my content creator. She's amazing. She gives me all this great content. Come here. Let's introduce you to everybody. What is your name, my little princess? Her name is Senna Rose Bedavid, and she gives me all my content. Yes. Okay, go. Go back to what you were doing. Cool, baby. Anyways, okay, let's get right into it. 10 things to unlearn in 2019. This is purely perspective on thinking in a complete different way. Number one, many, many years, you and I have heard that statement of you are six degrees of separation. You are six degrees away from the president, six degrees away from a billionaire, six degrees away from Michael Jordan, six degrees away from anybody. Today, it's no longer six degrees. Today, you're probably two degrees away from anybody. If you go look at your social media, what I would love to see happen one day, if somebody was able to put this technology together, imagine your 800 friends you have on Facebook, Twitter, whoever it is that you follow personally that you know, if there was a way for you to be able to know who they knew, who they had contact with, whose phone number they had, whose you know, email address they had, you literally become one or two degrees away from being Connected with the president, connected with anybody. It's a complete different ballgame today than ever before. So don't look at it as a big deal. How do I get and have, how do I have a meeting with that CEO? How do I have a meeting with this billionaire? How do I have a meeting with that politician? How do I have this meeting with this influencer? Not today. It's easier than ever before. You got to unlearn thinking it's a big deal to get connected with an influencer. Number two, being a celebrity today, it's no longer what it was in the 80s. Let me explain. In the 80s, there was no YouTube star. In the 80s, there was no Hey, sensation, this person had a beautiful body, post their pictures, 4.9 million followers. Nothing like that existed. In the 80s, if you had a nice body, you look good in Miami. You look good in L.A. Maybe you look good at a beach in, uh, you know, you went to in uh, Italy or you went to Spain and they knew how pretty you were. But they only knew you in that city. They only knew you in that town. Today, the world knows who you are. So the value of being a celebrity is not what it used to be in the 80s, meaning if somebody like you meets somebody there's a big difference between a celebrity versus being an influencer. An influencer, positive influencer, somebody is positively impacting people's lives. If you are going to make a decision to be anything, a lot of people say, well, I'm an influencer, I'm an influencer, I'm an influencer. There are many ways to be influencers. There could be negative influence. There could be you know, influence just because your body, your body's not gonna really do anything to me. It's just, wow, she's gorgeous. Wow, he's got nice abs. But to be an influencer where you are positively impacting the world through whatever methods you have to do, that's a completely different story. So nowadays, the value of celebrity, not what it used to be in the 80s, if you are positively impacting the world and you're an influencer, that's a completely different place to be. My challenge to you is to start thinking about celebrity this way. I want to be an influencer, not as much as being a celebrity for the right reasons. Number three, meaning of money. Uh, if there's anything you can learn about money, is how money works and your relationship with money. Money is very interesting. Think about it this way. Money is the person you know in your life where if you allow them to, allow them to, they will use you. You ever met anybody that if you allow them to, they'll use you, they'll abuse you, they'll bully you. You ever have somebody like that in your life? That's money. But that same person, if you lead them, they realize you can be pushed around. That's money. If money realizes you're putting money to work, not the other way around, money says, well, you know what? I found a leader. I'll follow this person. Because money loves to be led. Money loves to be put to work. But most people don't know how to put money to work. If you don't put money to work, money goes out there and does other things and works for somebody else. So your relationship, one is money's got to change. Start thinking of that as a tool. Start thinking about it in a completely different way. If you've never watched the video, 20 Rules of Money, Mario, let's put a thumbnail up here. Click over here to go watch the video, 20 Rules of Money. And then after that, go watch the next video called How to Double Your Money. It'll give you a completely different perspective about how money works going into 2019. The next thing to unlearn in 2019 is political beliefs. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. Listen, don't, if there's anything you can pick up in 2019 that can help you out as the following. Don't let any of the media outlets emotionally confuse you and make you change your mind. Let me explain to you. Imagine I got two people here, okay? They're both trying to sell their ideas onto you. One of them gets up based on a ton of research done by Pew Research. That's not Republican. That's not Democrat. This is not 
Fox News research, that's Republican. This is not CNN, MSNBC research, that's Democrat. I'm talking somebody that is, you know, not necessarily leaning on one side politically. This person gets up and makes their case to you, and they say, here's what's going on right now, here's what's happened with the economy, this is what's taking place in this area, here's why this is taking place, this is what the percentage is. For instance, hey, you know, uh, people going back to prison, I'm making an argument to you and st- telling you, uh, recidivision rates, right? After one year of a person being out of prison, 56% end up back in prison. Okay, so I went into prison, I get out, 56% of inmates that got into prison and left go back in a year later. 67% is three years later, 76% is five years later. That's stats, right? And I give you a story. Another person gets up and it's purely emotion, but they're unfair but they have no idea what they're doing. They don't really care about people. They don't really care about this, but there is zero fact. They're only talking emotion. Don't fall for it. I want both. I want to hear emotion. Cool. That makes sense. I'm, I really felt the pain, but I also want logic. Give me some data. Give me some numbers. So if you're Republican and you only watch Fox News, you're blinded. If you're a Democrat and you only watch CNN, you're blinded. You need both. I want both. I want to watch and read all of it. I read Republican books. I read Democratic books. Don't get too blind in this area in 2019 because there's going to be a lot of games in 2019 and 2020 when it comes down to politics. Don't be naive. By the way, even someone that's watching this right now saying, I'm not going to be naive. Yet you still only listen to the stuff that you like to hear, that you agree with you're still not making your argument stronger. you got to be able to listen to everything, kind of get an idea about if you got any blind spots there. Number five, meaning of friendship. What is the meaning of friendship? Look, uh, you party with your friends. I had one of our guys the other day who's one of our top earners um, in the company, Ricky Aguilar, said, just because I partied with you for three, four, five years doesn't make you my best friend. It just means we partied together, and at that time I enjoyed it. He says, I have made a decision to grow my life in a whole different place, and I'm realizing those people aren't friends. They were people I partied with. There's a big difference between people I partied with and people that I'm friends with. And I think a lot of times people emotionally say, well, you know, I, I, it's just Larry and John, you know, we used to party together, man. I feel like we have very deep roots. No, no, that's partying. That doesn't mean someone's going to defend you and back you up to help you go to the next level when it becomes friends. How many times do you see these posts on Instagram where somebody says, you know, oh, bro, you know, I got a job. Congratulations. I got my college degree. Congratulations. I'm starting my business. Oh, my gosh. You know, go the separate direction. You've seen those memes. Well, you know, let's just say there's some truth to that. You realize who your friends are. So in 2019, really eliminate some of those people that you thought were friends that you party with. Get rid of them. And replace them with some people that actually can go deeper rooted with values, principles, things that can help you become a better human being, redefine the meaning of friendship to you. Number six, family support. I can't tell you how many times people tell me things like, Pat, you know, what do I do? My mom and dad don't support me. You know, they don't support me for what I'm doing. My mom didn't support me to become an entrepreneur. I'll get messages after message after message on Instagram. They don't support me. They don't support me. Here's one thing you got to realize. Most parents are not going to support your dreams. Just realize that. They're not. Your job is to make them know if it's real or not. And by the way, if your dreams are 100% important to you and they become a reality, guess what your parents say? Wow, he was serious. When I first told my dad, I'm going to get into the financial industry. Let me tell you what my dad told me. Here's what my dad told me. My dad said, how are you going to go be a financial advisor of Morgan Stanley Dean Widow when you have $49,000 of debt? How are you going to do it? And guess what? I sat there and I said, maybe this guy makes sense. And I almost quit the financial industry. First time he heard me speak, year and a half, I was speaking in front of 500 people at an event. And he says, you were on stage. I said, yes. He says, you're 22 years old. Why are they listening to you speak? I said, well, I'm starting to make a name for myself in the world of business. And then he became a believer, not the other way around. Don't try to win your family support and say, my parents don't support me. That's why I didn't make it. Lame. I know many people that didn't have family support. They made it. Then their family said... We respect you because even though we didn't support you, you still went through with your dreams. Number seven, social media, pros and cons. you got to understand both aspects of it. There's a lot of people that only sell pros. There's a lot of people that only sell cons. You need to know both. If you know one thing about me is I like perspective. I want to see both sides. I'm going to give you both sides on social media. Let's start off with cons. Getting hacked. Accounts are getting hacked lately. Hardcore. We got hacked, Mario, what was it, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, we got hacked. Let me tell you what happened. 
you will get emails that look like this. Mari, why don't we put up an image of what the email looks like. The email comes out and it has the Instagram email. Everything looks real and it says, click here, you have a post that is unapproved, your account's about to be deleted because of a, something you broke or something you did wrong, et cetera, et cetera, and they're not approving it, right? So all of a sudden, what they'll do is, you'll have that email, you'll click on it, and you'll log on. The moment you log on, that wasn't an email from Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. They go into your account, then they go immediately change your account password, after they go on your account and change your account password, you don't have access to your account. From there, they automatically go in and do whatever they want to do. This guy got on uh, uh, our Value Team and Instagram account. He got on. He changed it. He changed the handle. He changed everything. We lost control for six hours. And then finally, I ended up sending him a message, and I told him, I said, look, you know, I, I can actually put you exactly what I wrote him. Mario, why don't we put an image of what we told this person in a response? And I put this response back, then a the guy came back, he felt bad, he said he gave me the password and we got by Tim and activated. Again, we got control of the account, but many times this doesn't happen. And by the way, Instagram doesn't have a, a help account, Facebook doesn't, Twitter doesn't, YouTube doesn't, many of these accounts don't. So, and they may take a month to get back to you because you're not that big of a priority if you're not high profile. So what does it mean? Be very careful when you're getting these emails, don't fall for them. Next, permanent, whatever you post on social media is permanent. Pictures, doing any of that stuff. You may be in your 20s or a teenager thinking it's not a big deal. 20 years later, it's going to come back and ca catch up to you. Bullying. There's bullying going on on social media all the time. I share bullying with you because you got to share bullying with your kids. Senna, that doesn't write it over there. You want to go write on a paper? Go over there. Uncle Mario will give you a paper to write on. Bullying when it comes down to social media. You got to talk to your kids about bullying. Happening all the time. I get these messages. Parents always contact me saying, what do I handle about this? What I handle about that is past week when we were in Palm Springs with 141 of our execs, I talked to them about how I speak to my kids about sex, how I speak to my kids about secrets. Like, I'm not a fan of people saying, do you want to keep a secret? I, I tell my kids, there's only two people you keep secrets with. That's your parents, okay? You don't keep secrets with strangers. These are things that you have to be teaching your kids. I think a lot of times parents are so busy that they're worried about having the sex conversation, the bullying conversation, the sexting conversation, and then, and then all of a sudden it's too late. You gotta have that conversation and be prepared for it. Camera's always on, location tracking. The other day we went and ate at Fleming's. Mari had location tracking on his, uh, what was it, Snapchat account or whatever it was, one of those accounts, and then all of a sudden, boom! Guy runs in, we have a private room. He jumps in, can I shine your suit? Can I do this, can I do that? And everybody started kind of panicking a little because the guy was breathing very hard and he had stuff in his hand. But then uh, we started talking, he was a stable guy. But this has happened many times. I've gone to movies and my tracker was on with a guy that took a Snapchat of me, people showed up. So you just have to know, you gotta have your tracking off, you gotta have your notification off. If you don't have your notification off, you will have no life. All of these things will be updating, like your Instagram messages off, Snapchat messages off. You have so many things that will haunt you if you keep your notifications on. Opposition. I'll tell you what about opposition when it comes on to social media. There are a lot of people that uh, don't like people to disagree with them, okay? When I started creating content, you know, all of a sudden we started getting one negative comment, two negative comment. Nowadays, we get hundreds of negative comments that people post. Here are some of them that I have up here. You can read them. We get a lot of them. Some of them are funny. Some of them are harsh. Some of them are direct. Some hurt. But regardless, if you are planning on creating content, you have to know that people will oppose you. And if you can't handle that, you just need to make that decision whether you want to do it or not. Now, here's pros. Connection, speed, cost, effect of marketing. Grand grandparents are staying in contact with grandkids because they can do FaceTime and see the kids. You're one video away from being an online celebrity. Uh, education accessible to you, making money. Today, the youngest YouTuber is a seven-year-old kid who made $22 million in 2018. He is the youngest YouTuber, highest paid YouTuber, seven years old, made $22 million last year. Think about this. He's a toy review YouTube channel. So there's so many pros and cons with social media. Your understanding about social media has to change. Both pros, both cons. If all you think about is pros, you got to get the perspective on the cons. If all you think about is cons, you got to think about the perspective on the pros. Number nine, resume 2019. You know how resume has always been what? Here's my job. Here's where I work. Here's my degree. Here's this. Here's that. Let me tell you what impresses me. I'm sitting there hiring different CFOs, and six CFOs are sitting there giving me their pitch. 
the guy at the end says the following to me. He says, by the way, I watched some of your videos. I just want you to know, just last week, I ran a mile in 5 minutes and 42 seconds. I said, you did what? He said, I ran a mile last week in 5 minutes and 42 seconds, and I'm 46 years old. I said, you got to be kidding me. No, I made a note of it. That stuck with me when I stepped away. Why? I thought about his health condition, stamina, energy to be able to last long. What does this mean to you? If I am applying anywhere today and I'm posting my resume, I'm going to tell you what I'm posting. Here's what I'm putting in my resume. If I've traveled the world, I'm letting you know I've traveled the world because I've seen culture. And I'm going to explain to you that I know how to deal with different cultures. If I have contacts, the right contacts, I'm going to put the five contacts that I have in high places, direct contacts, cell phone that I have a relationship with. It, it influence. If I have a certain influence with my following, I'm going to put on my resume. 62,000 people follow me on Instagram. You know, 93,000 people follow me on Facebook. I have 17,000 followers on Twitter, and their main niche is the following five words. I'm going to put the books I've read. Here's the top five books I've read in business. I'm going to write it. These are the top ten books I've read. I'm going to sit there and say, this guy's read these books? Yes. Wow. I asked you about the book. You know about the book. I'm impressed. More than your degree, I'm impressed the books you've read. Your credit score. i got a 793 credit score. How does this guy have a 793 credit score? Credibility, discipline, your health. I ran a marathon three weeks ago. Really? Which one? Boston Marathon, 26.2 miles. You ran it. Yes, I did an Ironman. You know, I won the CrossFit whatever, whatever for the state of Texas. I'm impressed. Those things today matter on your resume. Maybe not 20 years ago. Today they do. Unlearn how you view resumes. Number nine, being a millionaire. It's no longer a big deal. This is the easiest time to be a millionaire. However, as easy as it is to be a millionaire, this is also time where more criticism is given to millionaires. So you have to close your ears to the criticism of being a millionaire and feeling bad about being a millionaire, and you have to realize it's so easy to go be a millionaire today. Truly, this is the easiest time to be a millionaire in the world ever. Go make your millions. Last but not least, meaning of love. One time a good friend of mine were in Cinque Terre, Italy. And we have a long drive from Tuscany. I rented a 17-bedroom mansion in Tuscany, all the way up on top of the mountains. A beautiful place, incredible time, pool in the backyard, hired chefs, all these things. And one day we decided to go to Cinque Terre. Uh, it's a beautiful place. You've seen it on postcards before, all these houses that are different color, orange, yellow, pink. And we ended up eating over there. On the drive there, we were having a conversation. By the way, we ran out of gas on the way up. It was pretty bad. I mean, I, w I went into the gas station half a mile. The car is running out of gas. It was a downhill. We just passed the red light and pulled into a gas station. We got some gas. Or else we'd be in a bad situation there because there was no gas stations all the way on top of the mountain. And we're driving. We started talking about the meaning of love. I said, tell me what love means to you. And he says, love to me is a feeling, an emotion. I said, uh, uh, I said to me, love means verb. Love is a action. Love is shown. He says, I don't know if I agree with you. I said, that's totally fine. We can have different meanings of love. But if you love somebody, you got to show it to them. How do you show it to them? Whatever way it is that you show it to them. Show is action. Show is a behavior. So why are we talking about love right now? A lot of people say they love you, but they don't show you the action. You got to kind of realize who loves you and who doesn't love you. All these people that say they love you, it's such an easy word to use. Let me tell you, many, many men have used the word love 10 seconds before they got it on with somebody, okay? And it's just a magical word. Just tell me you love me. And the guy's like, ding, 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 ding. All the blood is rushed, rushed to the middle part of their body. And they say, I love you, baby. Okay, and then they have, and it says, well, I don't know if I love you like that. Love is action. Love is a lot of work. Love is a lot of effort that you got to put into it. Yes, baby? Yes or no? What do you think? You just want to be in a video? So I love this baby. So you know what happens if I love you? What do I do if I love you? Can I show you some love? love yeah, I love you. I give you a kiss. Yes? What do I do to love you? I support you. I protect you. I tell you you're amazing. Yes? I take you places with me. We spend quality time together. We play. We wrestle. We go shopping together. We go eating together. We spend time together. We laugh together. We cry together. Yes? Yes or no? You know what all that stuff is? What is all that stuff? All that stuff is love, baby. So in 2019, redefine the meaning of love, okay? Really start looking at who truly loves you. If love is truly a verb, who is truly loving on you? And love is truly a verb, who are you showing love to yourself? And if you're not, make an effort. 
And if others are not, have that conversation with them. And if they still don't do it, then identify who is the person that you want to get tied to and identifying that community of love and who is just an acquaintance. You got to get very clear about your relationships in 2019. Very, very clear. Again, let's go back and debrief what we talked about. Six de degrees of separation. Today's two. Being a celebrity is no longer that tough. It's the ideas about being a positive influencer, the meaning of money, watch the video, 20 rules of money, political beliefs, emotional versus logic, meaning of friendship, family doesn't necessarily have to support everything you do, social media pros and cons, resume in 2019, being a millionaire, meaning of love. I want to hear what else you want to unlearn in 2019. Send me a tweet, at Patrick Bay David, the handle's right here. And if you have not yet subscribed to Valuetainment, click on the subscribe button right down here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.